Thanks. So. Thank you, Gary. It's good to see everybody here. It's good to be here, especially because we're getting about a foot of snow at home, so it's really good to be here. I don't know that my wife would agree. So we're going to take a little bit of a, a left turn in the middle of this block of presentations where we're talking about pathways and education and such like that. And we're going to talk a little bit about the technology and technology for community paramedicine and, and, and EMS and such. So you know, t med tech um, is certainly a driver in healthcare. Healthcare is advancing, healthcare is evolving. Technology is behind a lot of that evolution. Um, you know, it was mentioned earlier, and we, we see it around the states, and there was a mention about a, a stroke unit in, in Canada, and those are popping up, and I, I think that's an example of, you know, technology and things pushing out from the brick and mortar walls of the hospital. What can we bring out to the field? And certainly community paramedicine is, uh, has aspects of that. The technology, oop, wrong direction. Somehow we're mixed up here. There we go. There's an extra slide in there. So technology uh, is easy, but sometimes the change aspects of it is hard and how we adapt. And uh, while a group like this, in, in some ways this is preaching to the choir because by the nature of you being here and involved in com community paramedicine, you are some of those that are on more the leading edge of, of advances and changes that are going on out there. Um, but not everybody's on, on that part of the curve, on the adoption curve, and whether uh, the disruption be a process and the change in the way we do something or the disruption be a technology that changes the way we do something. So we look at these, you know, the disruptive technologies is on the positive side of it as, as kind of responsive innovation. How do we apply a technology? How do we evolve? Um, you know, the, the barriers to that are, well, we've always done it this way. Um, we're resistant to change. Our medics are trained. We don't have to, you know, it's, it's good enough. Um, but then that, that hampers, that thinking certainly hampers. Um, some look to groups to see, you know, wh where do we go from here? You know, how do we push some of these advances? And like Ford said, you know, if he would ask, you know, the average person where, you know, what do you want, they would have said faster horses. And he came out with a car. Uh, when Apple came out with the iPhone, um, they didn't really do focus groups because they kind of knew that the average uh, person would have said, yeah, we want a slide out keyboard and we want to pull out antenna and that's all the advanced technology that we need. And, and they leaped uh, you know, across that. So, so it's around us um, and in, it is in this evidence-based world, you know, technology needs to be um, uh, adding to the value of the patient care and not, and not detracting it. Um, and, w and not just a, a shiny object. Let's see if we can. Okay, so w one of the things we look at when we're measuring, because you can get shiny object syndrome when you're talking about technology, right? You know, there's new apps that come out and new gadgets and they're interesting and EMS is uh, uh, pretty creative on, on applying things, but does it really help your care? Is, is there synergies there? So if we look at it as, you know, what's the why? Never mind what it does. You know, what's the why? So I imagine uh, mission statements and core purposes that you have in your agencies are probably some variant of that top line there, you know, advancing health care, doing more for your patients with less. Um, you know, us as a technology provider, you know, ours is along those lines. It's really to provide tools, and you need that alignment in, in the thinking and, and what it is. So a piece of that, and, and piece that, that we're involved in is on the communication side. And sometimes we think we communicate better than we actually do. Um, a lot of the communications in, in traditional ambulance care and EMS care is voice communication, sometimes text, um, sometimes you know, data. Um, but what is the context? What is the tone? Um, we've all had those text, text messages or emails that uh, uh, we exchange and, and the, you know, they interpret very differently than, than he had wrote it, uh, written it or uh, expressed it. So, you know, are we getting the messages across? Are we communicating? And with the community paramedicine, certainly there's needs to be able to communicate on patient care to a, a range or a variety of providers. It may not be the traditional, you know, 999, 911, where you're talking to a medical director to a hospital, but now you may be talking to a, a, a primary care physician or somebody else in the care continuum there and being able to 
you know, have that continuity is important. So it was, it was touched on earlier. Um, James had mentioned, you know, telehealth, and we, we, we kind of exchanged the terms, and they even the uh, world that we live in, they get blurred a lot between what's telemedicine, what's telehealth, and uh, you know, depends on who you ask and, and what the context is. But there's technology to allow you to do things more remotely, um, and you know, kind of along that concept, and I saw it up earlier, you know, right place, uh, right time, right location. Um, you know, how, how can you do that with working with less, right? So we're, we mentioned everything is cash strapped and um, you're, you're trying to stretch resources and people and skill levels. So we're, we're gonna talk in the next pieces about education and skill levels, which we know are varied. What can we do to bridge that? Can we use technology to perhaps uh, help in, in training, to help in mentoring and such? So part of the telehealth and, and telemedicine piece that's more appropriate for community paramedicine is the mobile aspect. And that's changed over the years. We've been involved in, in telemedicine, you know, going back to the 90s. Um, but things, you know, like our mobile devices that we carry and the equipment that they carry on the ambulance, the game's really changed, broadband, uh, you know, wireless. Um, so what can we do with that? You know, what are some of the applications? And there's standard, you know, emergent type applications, and then certainly there's applications within uh, the community paramedicine side of things. But it's all about, you know, what's the option, what the need is from you. There we go. So on the CP side of things, uh, you know, what are the applications? What what can uh, be used? You know, where are the holes? Where are the gaps? What are your needs? Because that's really what needs to drive it. And again, it's not necessarily a technology solution looking for a problem, you know, what, you know, it needs to be that, that alignment of the whys, what, what is your mission, what is the technology mission, is there alignment there, can this provide, you know, pieces and, and fill some gaps that you have. Um, again, we mentioned the, the qualifications and, and doing more with less, right, right care, right time, right place. So it's not just visual, it's not just uh, voice communications, you know, we're, we're very data centric. Um, you know, some of the presentations here, you know, you see, you know, modeling and statistics and measurements, um, but when we have other measurements and data from the field itself, all right, so we, we have parameters that are coming out of the devices that we go into the home with, um, and, uh, EKGs and, and blood pressure measurements and uh, pulse ox readings, and, and some of this is on episodic basis where you know, the medic may be bringing this into the home and taking a set of, of measurements, but there's also telehealth where there's devices left in the home for more of the chronic care, so whether it's a CHF patient or a diabetes patient, uh, where they can use this to uh, perhaps even trigger, alert, trigger alerts. So if you got a CHF patient and there's scale readings daily and they see a, a spike in that, that can trigger an alarm and an alert and again allow you know, the continuum of care to catch things earlier and not let this become a, a transport back to the emergency department. So it all comes down to you know, what are the results? You know, what do you get out of this? Is it doing what you need? Um, EMS and community paramedicine certainly are quite varied. Uh, you heard it here, we hear it all over the states. Um, there's an expression and I imagine it applies here if, if you know one EMS system, you know just one EMS system, and that I sure, sure applies with community paramedicine. Um, everybody's got a little bit different twist um, and turn, and there's really no necessarily right or wrong on those applications. The pendulum, pendulum will swing, and what makes sense will stick, and what doesn't will go away. Um, but you know, is it getting the, the outcomes and the results that, that you're interested in? Uh, the gentleman pictured here is a medical director out of um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, he works with his community paramedics and he, he carries an iPad. So when they need to make a consult or contact with him, he can be in that mobile world and you know, do a direct consult. And, and they can do it by information, they can do video. Uh, and that video may be between the care providers as a physician and medic or that can be even in direct interaction between the physician and the patient itself in, in the cases where that makes sense. So it's all about that and, and that's where we are you know, looking and, and working with 
providers on what are the needs, what are the holes, what are the gaps, how can you use technology such as that to, to provide better patient care for your patients. So as we wrap up, um, we do have a white paper um, that you can download if you can get a little more information on that or if you see me after we can get you a copy of that. Um, it's an evolving field. Um, there was a stat that I just read Said, uh, and this is probably more in the hospital side, but again, it, you can see how technology is moving to the mobile environment. But on, on 2013, there was about 250,000 uh, telehealth interactions with patients or tel uh, patients uh, handled. The estimate for 2018, so looking ahead a year, was 3.2 million. So you can see there's a, a pretty sharp increase on, on what the prediction is and how this is. So just some takeaways. Um, Changes all around us, it's nothing new to you. You're involved in it right here with, with CP. Um, telehealth and telemedicine is a tech tool that may be able to assist you in, in uh, your programs and allow you to communicate in new and better ways and, and we, we embrace that by uh, what we term responsive in innovation. And hopefully, <laughs> thank you.